Now, similar to how tone roll-off works on a guitar, the internal electronics of your guitar rolling off those high frequencies, basically shunting them to ground uh, using a simple capacitor, amps can do the same thing, but instead of doing it just to your top end, they can do it to your tops and middles and bottoms, and you know, there's various other bands as well, but in a typical um, uh, you know, simple guitar amp, you might have a three band passive tone stack like this. We call them stacks because everything's kind of stacked on top of each other, as you can see in the diagram. So all of this is basically come straight off uh, basic electronics theory, just filter theory. If you've ever done basic electronics, you would have seen something like this, where you have a capacitor followed by a resistor that gives you a high pass filter. In other words, it rolls off the low frequencies, it rolls off your bass. The opposite of that is a resistor followed by a capacitor that will build you a low pass filter. In other words, the low frequencies will pass, but the high frequencies will roll off there. Okay, so let's have a look at a, an equation that might freak you out a little bit. Take a deep breath, okay? <laughs> this is how we calculate what the, um, the cutoff frequency is for any filter. Don't worry about you know all the stuff there. It's basically the filter cutoff equals 1 over 2 pi and the values of your resistor and capacitor. But let's just look at just a couple of things here. Basically, your cutoff frequency, as that goes up, in other words, look at our high pass filter. As that goes up, it's moved to the right. On the low pass filter, it's moved to the right as well. If, you, if your filter cutoff frequency goes up, that's going to be because your R and your C values have gone down. Okay? Don't worry about the rest of the equation. Let's just look here, which is your cutoff frequency and your values of your resistor and your uh, capacitor. Okay, so nothing else is going to change in that equation. One's always going to be one, two's always going to be two, pi's always going to be pi, but these two are the variables right here. We, one could say that the frequency cutoff and the resistor and cap values are inversely proportional. In other words, one goes up, the other one goes down, the other one goes up, the other one goes down, and they just go back and forth as you make adjustments, it will change what is happening on the other side. So let's see an example of this. This is a great little program. I don't know if you've ever seen this tone stack calculator. You can find it at duncanamps.com slash TSC. And what it does, it shows you the frequency response of all of these different type of tone stack circuits. But the, you know, and you can go from tab to tab between the Marshall, Fender Vox and some other circuits as well. But the great thing about this is you can punch in values for these um, resistors and caps and as you make those changes, the frequency re response will be plotted on the right hand side and you can see all of those uh, cutoff points all being updated in real time. Let's see this in, uh, in, in action. So I have three basic tone stacks, your Fender, your Marshall, your Vox. The Fender's in white, uh, the Marshall's in green, and the Vox is in red. You can see the Fender and Vox are pretty similar. The Vox's uh, frequency response is just kind of transposed to the right a little bit. The Marshall's quite different, and but one thing you notice about the Marshall, it's a lot hotter, right? Okay, so let's A, B, just the Fender and the Marshall circuit. 